Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Stout. I'm an engineer on the network nervous system team here at Definity. And here today I'm gonna to talk to you about a sample DAP that was currently, that was written to showcase some of the features of the internet computer. This DAP or decentralized application is a basic DAO or a basic decentralized autonomous organization. The purpose of this is to showcase the ability of the internet computer or IC to support communities of users that can come together and take action together in a dem democratic way. So this example DAP is currently open source and you can find it on the Definity slash examples repo on GitHub, um, specifically under the Rust slash basic DAO um, directory. And so jumping in and getting a little bit deeper, this is a DAP or single canister that's developed in Rust. And its implementation is very simple. It is, does have basic in the name. There are two major components. There's one that maps users to um, an amount of tokens that they control. Um, users can then transfer tokens among each other and they can view their balances. And then there's also a proposal component to this as well. Users can submit proposals where they can propose to call an arbitrary canister with a method and arguments. So it's very, you have a lot of freedom to call any canister with any arguments, any method that you want. Then the uh, community that has, the users that have accounts in this application can use their tokens as voting power to vote on these proposals to say, to dictate whether they want them to pass or not, to be rejected. So the amount of tokens that you own correlates one-to-one -one with the amount of votes that you have on a proposal. Once a proposal is passed, once it gets enough votes in favor of it, that um, proposal, which is call a canister with the, this method, these args, that gets executed. So this basic DAO canister will then call another canister as dictated by the proposal. And so we'll go this readme on this um, page, which you can find in GitHub again, contains a demo that kind of um, details exactly how we can do each of those components, how we can um, get tokens and transfer tokens, and then how we can submit proposals, vote on them, and witness the execution exactly of how that works. So just to jump in, um, once you've cloned this repo and you've um, gone to the correct directory, here we can just build the canister, and that doesn't take too long. And then in another tab, we need to do dfx start. What this does is it runs a the internet computer locally, or the IC. And then we can then deploy our canister to that locally running internet computer, which we'll do very shortly. But first, this DAO you know, needs uh, users in it, so we need to create some test users. So what we'll do using DFX is we'll create some identities. We'll create Alice and Bob. And that is pretty simple to do. Just copying these commands. So we've created Alice and Bob, and we created Bob last. So we're currently running commands as Bob. So that's a current, the configured identity. So now we can deploy uh, the basic DAO canister to our locally running internet computer. And we can use this command. There are init arguments that you can pass. So you can list all the accounts that you wish. Um, what we're going to do is initialize Alice and Bob with some tokens, as you see here. So tokens are denominated in E8s. So this is um, 10 to the negative 8 tokens. So that allows you to subdivide tokens a little bit more fine-grained. So here, while it says 100 million, it's really uh, 10 tokens that we're giving to Bob and Alice each. They're just denominated in these E8s. And then we're also passing in some system parameters. And so these are like, what are those transfer fee? So when you transfer tokens from one user to the other, what fee do you want to incur between users? And there's also some other fields that will uh, that you can configure as well. So let's deploy. So this deploys the um, basic DAO canister that we built and initialize accounts for both Alice and Bob, and this will deploy to our locally running internet computer. And so this will not take too long. 
Now the next step is to call the list accounts method on the basic DAO canister. So this will list all the accounts that are held in this canister. Now we've deployed, so now we can call this list accounts. And we see that there are two accounts, one for Alice and one for Bob. And the principles are just the you know, user IDs of these uh, users, both Alice and Bob. And they both have 10 tokens, as we've discussed. So now, that is uh, a method that any user can run. Any user can list the accounts of the canister. But as Bob, I can check my own account balance, because that is the identity that DFX is using. And we see that I do have 10 tokens. Now, what I can do is I can transfer it to Alice. And so I can just call this, copy this command. This is the calling the transfer method, as you see highlighted here, with um, a target user, Alice, and an amount. So we're going to send her nine tokens. And if we do that, we see that that successfully completed. So that's OK. And now we can list accounts again. And we should see that Bob has some tokens that depleted, and Alice has a little bit more tokens. And we see here that did exactly that, that one account grew by nine tokens, and that Bob um, had nine tokens depleted. So you'll see here that they're, it's not exactly you know, depleted by nine tokens, accounting for the E8s. There's also, there was a transfer fee that also kicked in. So we lost. 10,000 E8s in making that transfer. Now, maybe as a community, we feel like the, the transfer fee is too high to transfer tokens among each other. And so as a community, we want to you know, pull together to change that. Well, that's where the proposal feature comes in. So we can submit a proposal to do exactly that. So if we want to find out what the current transfer fee is, we can call the get system parameters method, or params, right here. We see that there's three of them. There's the transfer fee, which we just talked about. That's 10,000 E8s. Then there is the proposal vote threshold. This is how many votes are needed to pass a proposal. So right now, this is equivalent to um, one token, or um, you know, 10 to the 8 E8s. Um, and then the Proposal submission deposit. So this is also 10,000 E8s. This is to uh, disincentivize people from submitting superfluous proposals. So proposals had no cost, and anyone could just submit superfluous proposals and kind of wash the community in proposals. Here, anytime you submit a proposal, you have to submit a deposit. So you have to have that much amount of tokens, and that is kind of withheld from your account until the proposal is acted on. If the proposal is passed, you get that amount back. If the proposal is rejected, then you don't you lose that amount. And so that incentivizes people to make quality proposals. But all we care about here is the transfer fee. So we want to change the transfer fee. Maybe we think it's too low. We don't want you know be maybe uh, people think more when they about transferring tokens. So let's make a proposal to double that. So we go back to the demo. We see that. The proposal payload, to su submit a pro pay, uh, proposal, we need to uh, submit a canister ID, so the canister that we want to call, the method that we want to call in that canister, and the message or arguments that we want to pass to that method or that function. So if we want to change the transfer fee on the basic DAO canister, what we need to do is call the update system params with a new transfer fee on this canister. So to, do, to um, do that, we need first to, because the message in this proposal payload is a blob, we need to convert that transfer fee equals this new value into a blob, or basic bytes. And to do that, there's a tool called didc. This is part of the candid tool chain. The instructions on how to use this um, are on this readme, so feel free to take a look. And doing that, we see that we can um, basically create this transfer fee equals, we change it to this amount. So it's 20,000 instead of 10,000, so we're doubling the transfer fee. So we just convert this to binary. And now we can construct our proposal. So we'll see that we'll do the submit proposal method on the basic tab canister. 
the canister ID is going to be the canister ID of the basic dev canister that we installed. Um, previously, when we uh, deployed it, it spit out a, a canister ID, and that's kind of what we're using here. Then the method we're doing is the update system params. And the message is this binary encoded blob that we just created, which will say set the transfer fee to 20,000. So if we copy this over and we run it, we should get a proposal ID back. So this is this zero is the ID of the proposal we just submitted. And so if you want to take a look at the metadata for this proposal, we can call get proposal with the proposal ID. And so we copy this over, call it. And this should spit out some metadata. You see here that we, it has an ID, which is zero, has the amount of votes that have voted no for this proposal, it lists all the voters that have voted on this, and the state. So the proposal is still open. It will be not open. It will move to either adopted or rejected once enough yeses or enough noes have been cast. There's a timestamp of when it was submitted, the proposer, the amount of votes yes for it, and the actual payload. So which canister ID? what method, what arguments. Now, once a proposal is submitted, we can vote on it. So our identity that DFX is using is Bob, as we established earlier. So as Bob, we can vote on this, and we can vote yes. So let's do that right now. And that went through, and we see that the state is still open. So Bob did not have enough tokens to vote to pass this proposal. So tokens are one-to-one -one map to the amount of votes you have. And so the amount of yeses that were cast were not enough to pass a proposal. And so what happens is that we need other users to vote on this proposal and if we want to pass it. So what we can do is we can switch identities to Alice and as Alice, vote to pass the proposal. So we'll do just that. So the first command we'll use, we'll switch to Alice and then next one we'll call vote as Alice, and we'll cast a yes vote. And we'll see that instead of getting open back this time, as the proposal state, we get back accepted. That means enough votes have been um, cast to pass the proposal. And once the proposal is accepted, the basic DAO canister itself will automatically execute that proposal. So it will call that canister ID with that, that method and those arguments for that method. And so if we do get proposal again, if we fetch the proposal metadata again, we should see that it's succeeded, that it's already been executed. And we see just that. We said that two people have voted on it, it succeeded. And we see that the number of yes votes has, is accurate. So it says it succeeded, but let's confirm this. So if we get the, if we call get system params, we should see that the transfer fee has been updated from 10,000 to 20,000. And if we do just that, we see that indeed the transfer fee has been updated. So this concludes the demo. And just to recap this, we've seen that this basic DAO canister enables uh, communities of users to hold and transfer tokens and also to submit and vote on proposals that will execute the will of the community. So I hope this provides a good inspiration for those of you looking to build DAOs on the internet computer, and we look forward to seeing what you build with it. Thanks.